So the party has started. The party that I've been waiting to get an invite to for years, except for some reason I am apparently not a part of the independent panel that will be judging Manchester City's guilt or innocence in the violation of financial fair play rules. But I look, as somebody that has decided to become intimately familiar with the way this whole weird, fucked up process works, I can be the first to tell you, don't get too excited. Because this, the, you know, the ball is not going to drop until the ball drops in New York, probably, right? This is going to take a while, even though the invest, like the, well, uh, I want to make sure I get my words right here, right? Even though the hearing, not trial, not investigation, even though the hearing about everything is now underway, as of probably by the time you watch this video, because they said Monday, it's Sunday night, so I'm assuming that I hit the nail on the head with this. Uh, but it will be underway, but it is not going to be like done in, in a week or a month or a year or 10 years. No, it will be. It will be done by 10 years from now, hopefully. But honestly, I'm not sure. To give you the spark notes on this, uh, basically, Manchester City is accused of inflating the various value of things that it got uh, because, of course, there are two parts of FFP. There is the amount of money you make and then not spending more of that. What Manchester City decided to do instead of trying to hide spending more, they decided, it would seem, they're accused of, uh, they decided to inflate the value of the amount of money that they were making from a bunch of different things. Some of the charges relate to a lack of cooperation with the Premier League. So it's, you know, you know the 115 number is kind of random uh, because there are, uh, only a few of the charges are like big, massive, super serious uh, sorts of things. Then there's a lot of nickel and diming charges like this one game you overreported maybe how much money you made from ticket sales, right? That, that That's the sort of thing that the Premier League is investigating. The Premier League has already investigated this, okay? They've investigated this. They've decided to bring charges in the same way they did with Nottingham Forest and Everton, who were, you know, very different situations. This investigation took three to four years, and they basically decided to bring those charges. But the way this all works, the Premier League clubs and the Premier League itself kind of agreeing upon this, the way that it all works is that it then goes to an independent commission. Now, I'm going to save you the sort of deep, like legal analysis that you were probably expecting from this channel of one dude sitting in a chair in the middle of the night talking about random shit, but I don't know who's on uh, the independent commission, but I'm not alone. Nobody does. Uh, you're not really going to know who's on the, you know, reading the BBC article right here. Look at me reading the, the, the British Broadcasting Corporation in writing, which kind of goes against the broadcasting name thing, right? But I guess, you know, they write stuff down too, so that's good for them. Uh, it is not public information who is a part of the independent commission. It is also not like an actual legal proceeding, so it's not in a court. There are no records. This is probably this is probably being held on some offensively wealthy person's like villa somewhere where they're just basically going to be able to sit in some fancy room and drink tea and eat crumpets and do other offensively British things like probably meet for an hour and then go ride horses wearing those fancy outfits for a few hours and then just scoff at people in the public square. I don't know what they plan on doing, but th there's no like giant public record about what's happening other than the fact that we know that this kind of hearing of an independent commission that is not associated with Manchester City, that is not associated with the Premier League, is going to sit down and hear the case and render what is essentially a legal opinion, right? But how long is that supposed to take? And of course, the same as every other part of this process, it's going to take forever, dude. It's going to take forever, right? They have this section, how long will the case last? The hearing is expected to last around 10 weeks, according to reports, and that will wrap up in late November, potentially even early December. Now, even though it is incredibly annoying, right? And I, I, I'm, I'm somebody that, uh, look, even Pep Guardiola, who's probably going to end up getting screwed by this, right? Even he is annoyed by the fact that this is kind of taking so long and finally getting underway. So he was happy that the hearing was starting up uh, because, you know, would finally have an opportunity to attempt to prove their innocence and so on and so forth. But I guarantee you Pep Guardiola probably doesn't even know the half of it. Ignorance is bliss when you're the bald savant, right? He's probably just been actively avoiding learning anything about whether they were cheating or not. And if I were him, 
I wouldn't blame him because, you know, times are good when you got the Viking up top and the red-headed magician kind of sitting behind him and then everything else just falls into place with these interchangeable $100 million wingers that you turn into, like, tapback merchants. And, and somehow it all works and good for them, but he definitely has no idea. And yet he's the only person that seems to be, you know, consistently publicly commenting on it from a Manchester City side. So that's a really unfortunate situation for him to be in in the first place. But this is a really complicated case. Uh, when I made my initial video about the charge, I've made multiple videos kind of digging through the charges, reading what they are, like d going through all of this stuff and determine, you know, what would be a likely punishment and so on and so forth. This case is super complicated, right? The cases around Nottingham Forest and Everton were so easy, so easy. I mean, Everton, their entire argument was basically, yeah, we went over by a lot, but COVID exemption in the Premier League was like, no. Nottingham Forest's argument was, hey, we realized we went over, but we had a transfer we finished later in the window that put us on the right side of the history of, you know, the FFP, and Premier League basically told them to fuck off and then penalized them anyways, right? They were very simple cases. This case is much more complicated, and it is, of course, made more complicated by the fact that the Premier League is essentially litigating against a, you know, bottomless money pit. Okay, there, there's a couple of funny things that have kind of come out of this. Uh, the legal costs are allegedly absolutely ridiculous um, for, for this. City's legal team's being led by Lord Panic KC, who allegedly charges £5,000 an hour for his services. If you paid me £5,000 an hour, you, I, I would literally do anything. I would steal the Declaration of Independence if you paid me £5,000 an hour. Are you kidding me? That's an un... I mean, I, I, I can't imagine if you were trying, you could find a more expensive lawyer in the entire British Isles. Right, but uh, some reports are that the sports law expert Adam Lewis, KC, is expected to lead the Premier League's legal team, so... Uh, apparently, the, you, when you're referred to as sports law expert, you're probably not cheap on the other side in the first place. So this is going to be a titanic battle between two very high-powered, very well-paid, and very well-armed legal teams that are arguing over the minutia of uh, the footnotes of various agreements, right? Between the agreement and the FF. Uh, agreements in the FFP, which Manchester City will likely be looking for literally any loophole in there that allows the sort of tomfoolery or that allows them to explain the sort of tomfoolery that they've been able to get up to over the last however many years, uh, which is, of course, just pretending that they're making more money than they have. And I think basically everybody is comfortable saying that Manchester City at least did that a little bit. I mean, I know that they're going to have this whole hearing to determine their innocence, but they've already been convicted in the court of public opinion. And they got convicted in the court of public opinion because I don't think anybody would assume that Manchester City has had the largest income of any club in the world. But that's what Manchester City was running while this was like going on, right? They, they were peaking at, we're making more money than any other club in the world. And look, Manchester City has come into a decade of success that would make any club jealous. But it takes decades upon decades upon decades of that kind of success to build up the sort of revenue generation that clubs like Real Madrid or Barcelona or Manchester United or you know even Liverpool have in the amount of money that they are able to bring in. It takes a really long stretch of global superstars and consistent success and that sort of thing to be able to make that amount of money. And so I, Bob, what I'm saying is it seems like even though they haven't been convicted, but again, this isn't a criminal trial, so this is you know all... The idea of guilt and innocence, like guilt and innocence, is not being held up to a criminal legal standard here. This is all entirely arbitrary to begin with. But it definitely always looked like to me that Manchester City was inflating the amount of money that they were making. You know, but that is not going to stop Lord Panic for trying to find that one beautiful loophole. And, and the problem is when you have 115 charges that are very complex, because it is hard to prove that somebody may, like, that is lying about how much something is worth, right? You, you know, Matt, like, people disagree about that all the time. Look at what stuff's selling for on Craigslist right now. You were like, what something is worth is usually a matter of uh, opinion. Now, the Premier League's argument is that Manchester City was being so obviously wrong with it that they were, you know, lying. And then, of course, there's all the legal argument about, well, they weren't cooperating, and that's part of the charges. And then, you know, well, we were cooperating up to the standard that it says in the legal code. You can imagine how this sort of thing could go on absolutely forever. And in some ways, I'm surprised that the actual hearing is only going to take 10 weeks. But after a four-year-long investigation, I can only imagine the giant stacks of paperwork that were generated 
you know, the troves of emails and texts and whatever that were collected as a part of an investigation like that, that this, you know, unidentified independent panel is going to have to go through to render their opinion on what should happen. And even when that's done, the verdict is not actually going to be out yet. When will there be a verdict? Once the hearing is concluded, there will not be an immediate judgment. An exact date for the verdict is unknown, with reports only suggesting a decision in early 2025. So that opinion is not going to come out in those 10 weeks, right? So they're going to have the whole hearing for 10 weeks, then I'm assuming the independent panel is going to, you know, re-go through everything again and write up what I'm sure is going to be an unnecessarily long kind of legal opinion. And then there's, there's one worse part about this, is even when that opinion drops, let's say it drops in February and it's in the middle of a title race and it has huge implications on the title race. Well, then we're going to be thrown into a specter of the unknown, right? Because there is an opportunity to appeal. Again, because this is not some sort of strict legal thing it does not have the opportunity to go to the court of arbitration for sport which is something that you can go to in the united kingdom but either side could appeal in a fresh hearing with a new independent panel be arranged well guess what whichever side loses the damn you know basically loses the damn argument here is going to appeal because that's how this works People that are getting paid this much are going to exhaust every possible option. One, because they're able to then get paid more to investigate that option, but also because you don't want to admit defeat in this situation. And at the very least, you want to prolong this as much as possible. So let's imagine a scenario where in February of 2025, Manchester City is found guilty of all 115 charges. They're yeeted down to the National League at the start of next season and give them one, you know, 100 point deduction or something. Uh, well, Manchester City would then be able to appeal that uh, based off the way the rules are written and understood right now. And when they appeal that, uh, that would, in the same way that it worked with Everton, delay the application of that points deduction, which means you'd have to then play out the rest of a title race with a the massive sword of Damocles just hanging over the actual title race that could drop at any moment whenever the, whenever the appeal is done. You guys know my solution to this is basically to have a window before a season starts where point deductions can be applied, after which any point deductions that are applied go into next season so that we don't have a situation like we had with Everton where they're just yeeting up and down the table uh, because that's just not, you know, that just ruins the competitive spirit of the sport, in my opinion, right? But obviously Manchester City is being investigated for ruining the competitive spirit of the sport. And that's before we even get into a conversation about whether FFP is a particularly good system because it obviously limits clubs from being able to kind of rise quickly. But on the flip side of that, I don't know if I want clubs to be able to do that because oil clubs just always seem less fun, right? They, they, they are inflated artificially and they are less fun. But then again, basically every owner of all of these major clubs has a truly ridiculous amount of money. So does it matter whether it comes from the oil or not? And then you're talking about the it, you, we've all had this conversation before, right? We've all had this conversation before. But the real point is, this is going to be a mess. And if you're, you know, if you're a Manchester City fan, you're always going to feel screwed over. And if you're somebody on the outside looking in that's convinced that Manchester City has already done some illegal stuff, whether they get convicted or not, you're still going to believe that. And it, this is a process that has been agreed upon between the clubs and the Premier League that is now playing out over five or six years, and it's going to take forever. And honestly, unless you get a couple of years from right now, you're still not really going to have a full understanding of the punishment that's going to be laid down on Manchester City. It's just the next step that has started today. That's all that started.